We're we're going. I don't even think I can. Yeah, maybe I do. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Bike Man for You show. Coming to you live from West Hampton Beach, Long Island, New York. I'm just going over some odds and ends of the bicycle shipping side of the business. Uh, we had a couple of returns, and I got a registered mail, certified mail to the Bike Man for You. I thought it was, you know, maybe. Hollywood producer or something, but no. Weather today is nasty, is what it is. It is raining. I don't think we're going to do any business. It's coming down pretty good. I think it's only supposed to rain until about noon, but I only got about an hour's worth of, pro of uh, content. But you know what? We'll have a good time. We got it up and running here on the screen. Thank you so much for everybody to enjoy and, and, and tune in. We got Alan C. in the house. We got Jaden, soundtrack of our lives. Welcome, welcome, Zigzag, Bill Cody. What's going on? Oh, it's just, ugh. What are you going to do? Oh, today's broadcast is brought to you by 7-Eleven, the world's best coffee. Bike man, what's up? Johnny, baby, what's going on? So today's show, I was just kind of writing it down here a little bit and kind of thinking about contemplating life. I gave I gave Marco the day off. It's raining, nasty. Got school and whatnot. And he might stop in later. I don't know. You never know. We got high hose bike. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work we go. We got ourselves, we, we made some progress on high hose bikes. It's actually in, in, in much better position than it was. We got, you know, it's the annual coming up. We just got our invitation in the mail. Tony Joe's got it over here on her desk. More of a personal side show here today. Anyway, this woman that we've been known friends of, oh, she was a great woman. Mary, Mary. Oh, I got costumes. We got Eric, Eric from New Jersey. Great, thanks for tuning in, Eric. She make, she's an artiste. She's a preschool teacher, preschool administrator, or a preschool principal. I like that, preschool principal. She owns a little preschool that she does her thing with. Uh, been a personal friend of ours for a lot of years. Mary MJP, and this is her. She drew this whole shooting match. It's got the ocean with the skeleton. Very talented, very talented. And blah, 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 all our business. Anyway, to make a long story short, we are going to Mary J. Post's annual costume party. Bring it on home. What's happening? Raleigh from Miami, Florida. Hello from West Michigan. How was your week? My week was all right. Danny, Danny, Dan, Dan. Dan the man Panetta. Bring it on home. Dilbert from Oklahoma. Nathan. All right. So anyway, we need to make a costume for it. And yeah, we could have went with the old rally cap and made things simple and easy and just put that on our head. And yeah, we're a football fan. Pretty simple. Done. No, we don't can't do that. We have a reputation to uphold at the Halloween party. I have a Oh my goodness, we just threw out a bunch of costumes when we were cleaning out the upstairs barn of where we live. We threw out toxic waste. I threw out another one, I can't remember. What was it, son of a? We got son of a in the house. Uh, yeah, Shorty the fireman. I was the tin man one time. I was Santa in a snow globe. Oh, I, I, I have had all kinds of good stuff Shorty in my... Shorty the fireman. Shorty the fireman. Shorty the fireman was a was a was a was a uh, costume. I took a garbage can and then I made like a fireman's lid on it and I made the emblem in here. So basically, it was about to about here, and I held this thing up, and then I drew a face on my gut, and then I had the pants down here. So basically, this part from here up was my hat, and it was a little shorty guy, Shorty the fireman. Make a long story short. Of course, Shorty the Fireman was a big hit. All of my costumes are always a big hit. So this year, what do we do? Toxic Waste was another good one. Snow Globe, Santa. I made an actual working snow globe. That was a good one. Are you going to do anything for Halloween? No. Probably. You're just you're just waking up there, son of a... Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for keeping me company. The fans are loving you. Did you know the fans were giving you kudos the other day on one of our things? I don't know if you saw that. So, a little thumbs up. If you ain't up, thumbs up for son of a doing a fine job behind that camera. Bring it on home. Not easy to get your ass up in the in the morning to come over and do your thing. We appreciate that very much. Anthony's in the house. Good morning. People are starting to come on, filing in on a Saturday, rainy, ugly day. So we got the costume that we got to figure out. Party. What are we going to be? I kind of think I'm going to be, I don't know if you guys are ready for this, but I'm going to lay it on you. I'm going to be an oyster, I think. An oyster. That's right, an oyster. In the shell, not out of the shell. Although, never mind. Uh, what's going on with Giant? I'd like to talk about that a little bit. Uh, that could bet. Uh, I don't know. Mike from Liverpool, what's going on? Marky, Gary Fleischman, what's going on? Um, and then we just got general junk outside, and if it would stop raining, we might sort through some of it. But we're really starting to clean her up for the winter time. Yesterday it was okay. We made lunch money, at least. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I, it is slowing down in the Hamptons, boo, like boo, blah, more like boo. And uh, what are you going to do? Jimmy Payton, what's going on? Don Peyote, Nick Carolla, Ireland, bring it on home, huh? Rent the trips in the house, already mine. No, it's not going to, Oyster's name is not, it's not going to be a, sh well, I guess Pearl could be a guy's name. I was thinking more like Happy. Oh, that is some good coffee. New rear derailleur install today. On what, Jim? On your bike? Good for you. There you go. It's going to make it smoother, cleaner, crisper, and better than ever before. Hi from England. What's going on? Kenneth Keith. Excuse me. Happy as a clam. There you go. I like that. Sunny in Holland. Bring it on. Black Astros. Thanks, guys. You know, our show wouldn't be half as much fun if it wasn't for all of you guys that are tuning in each and every week. So I appreciate it. So I guess we're going to go outside. Tony Joe, she's got a wedding to go to today. It's not too late to turn back now, but it's okay. It's a great institution. I'm just kidding. I don't want all the women to get pissed off at me. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Oh, it's ugly. It's raining. Oh, we got the Campagnola. Update. That I should probably bring my computer out here, shouldn't I? Yeah, I should. Before I get going, let me give you a little update on high hose wheel. We got high hose wheel right here in the truant stand. If you remember last week, we were talking about high hose wheel and how high hose wheel was all fucked in the ditch situation. That's a Whoa, look out, look out, look out. Oh no, help! I seem to have cut myself! No, I'm just kidding. I got all kinds of stuff flying all over. So, the hub was not in the center of the wheel, and you call that a dish, and it was just all kinds of screwy. Uh-oh. I hear a car. Could it be? Could it be the Lone Ranger? Could it be? It is. It is. It is. It is. It is the magical bearded wonder has arrived on the property. If you're not familiar with who that is, just stay tuned. You'll see. So anyway, the dish of the wheel, meaning the hub, was not in the center. It was all over to the side. It made an appearance that the wheel or the fork was even bent. Never occurred to us that possibly this was... But then as we started to d dive deeper into High Hose Bike, which is back there, which you'll get to in a minute. There he is, the mighty bearded wonder. I told you he was in the premise. Yeah, <laughs> another beautiful day in the Hamptons. Yeah, so, ah. so Freddie, nice of you to join us today. 
I got a shirt on with no holes. Yeah, I was bitching at Freddie the other day. He looked like a ragamuffin. He's got this thing. It's got, uh, but of course, it's one of those favorite. We all have them, but you know what? I had yeah, to tell him. Up. It's need to retire that one. It really yeah, needs well. to. Oh, this one's a little bit beat up, but that one's not as bad as the other one, man. So anyway, we did the dish on Pi Ho's wheel, and here you go, right? So here's, this is a dishing tool. We're going over this one more time so that everybody can understand, right? This goes to here. So now what happens here is it's touching on both sides, and the center here is touching on where it would go on the inside of the fork. Obviously, you want everything to be in the center, right? So there you are there. It's like dead nuts. It's touching, right? You turn this over, and it should be the same on the front wheel. But uh, eh, we're a little off. I don't know what happened here. Makita was messing with the wheel again, too, yesterday. We've been trying to get the hop out. But we are considerably better. I thought I had it a lot better than that. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, if it's within a quarter of an inch, it's freaking probably good. So... We also rebuilt this, and we had the dyno and all of this other business, and blah, 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 blah. We don't know the dyno works or not. Yes, the dyno works. The dyno works. The How dyno works. works. We put, we cross the thing and get a little sparkage. Mm. It works. Cool. Uh, so that's good. That's good, though. Hi Ho's wheel is kind of back in action. I thought I had that dish better than that, but that's all right. But here's how nice and straight. It really turned out pretty nice. Um, it's not bad. It's a little out in the hoppity hop hop. But again, the guy is, I don't know. I, I think he's throwing money onto this thing like there's no tomorrow, but whatever. We can put these bolts on here so we don't lose And we don't know why. We don't know why. He's got a fetish for old bicycles. Old bicycles that are just about dead. Are you Japanese? What's that? Is he Japanese? No, he's like Russian... Sergey oh. Serhai is his oh. is his real name. A new, a new Japanese trend to, to stuff all the vintage bicycles out of the country like they do with the fishing reels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you know. So that's that. I mean, it, it's coming. It's working. It's eh. I I, I can't envision Hi Ho riding this thing for any kind of distance. I'll be totally honest. I'm gonna put a tire on that a little later on and. Maybe get a rolling chassis. There and might be a couple of them around, and they might be like competing to see who can have the worst junk, you know? <laughs> Maybe. In the city. Maybe. Maybe he comes. I, I, I mean, you got to respect the guy. He comes all the way out from the city to come and see us. So we got to, you know, we got to, hey, let me put this away and this away. Got to love it. Mm-mm. <laughs> <sighs> it's the first I looked at that wheel since yesterday. Makito was playing with it yesterday. I had played with it earlier. Still not too happy with that wheel. Um, where'd my notes go? Where's the computer at? Freddy's inside. Freddy's inside on the computer. I was just about to bring the computer outside. Oh, yeah, what do you got there? Nothing, really. Anything good? All right, so where was I? Where's, oh, no, I don't have it there either. That's all notes for Pam. All right, I guess I can go into that one a little bit. So this morning I'm coming in and we got this registered letter. Oh, we got the Campy too to do. <clears throat> the Campagnola special DI whatever. Let me get a little. So this morning and I get this kind of regularly. I should go get a tire because that's what the difference is too. Yeah, we could go over, we could do a little lesson on that. That's a good idea. All right, stop for a second. Again, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of rolling today on the punches because there is just, oof, nasty day. 26 by 1 3 8 which is the size 
Pieces of high hose vintage wheel. One thing to another. Now, if I was thinking about this and I didn't just fly by the seat of my pants, I would have had this in a better position. Come upstairs here to get an inventory. Coming. So in the city, ring a ling, hear them sing. It's Christmas time in Puerto Rico. Maybe we're gonna go on a humanitarian mission for Christmas time to Puerto Rico and help them. That would be fun, I think. All right, so I should bring high hole wheels. I should snoozing at the switch here. Let me get into the story first. He's gotta be an older guy. He's an old school guy. This guy knows, he's a mechanic. You can just tell he's a mechanic. He's probably up there in a couple of years, meaning he's an older guy. And we all have to have respect for the older guy. Received, it comes in the mail, goes to him, blah, blah, blah. Set of tires, tubes. We sell them all day long. Two, two, two. 26 by one and three eighths. Two flavors. You have S5, S6, and you have standard 26, one and three eighths. This is between the Schwinn and the Raleigh. Way back when, or... Schwinn and whatever other 26, 1 and 3 A's. People mix it up pretty regularly, no matter how hard you try to explain it. Put out videos, warnings, be careful, all of that kind of stuff. You're still going to get a mistake or two. This guy happens to be a little bit older guy, so... And it's pretty obvious that the guy is not the most computer savvy guy in the world. So we go back to old school. This morning, I received a registered certified mail. That means you have to sign for it. It cost them $3.35 to send this to me. I saw the handwriting on here and it was really nice. It rung a bell. It was like, uh-oh, I've seen this guy's handwriting before. This is this morning. I didn't open it up yet, but you know, I opened it, but there, you know, whatever. So I go back here and I read the letter and whatnot, and then I look at this and I'm like, this has been sitting here for a while, and I'm like, okay. And I knew there was a problem with it. I knew it. I knew it wasn't over. He bought it on the website. Pam, return it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, handle it. Pam probably gave him a refund of partial or this or that. Because the margin in this stuff is so tight that him sending this back to me and then me giving him back, because it probably costs 13 bucks, 12 bucks, between 10 and 13 bucks to ship this to West Virginia. And uh, so the margins are very tight. It's not a question of, oh, here, I'll send you these back. You just send me the other ones. Well, it, uh, no, it can't work that way. I sent you exactly what you purchased. So this is what you have to deal with in the internet and being in business. And this is, I, hey, you take it with a grain of salt and you, this is the cost of doing business. But this guy here went above and beyond and I just, my heart goes out to this guy. He's got handwriting that I can tell he took mechanical drawing in class because it is perfect. He didn't do it there, but he also did it up here. Right, and then he did it on this letter, and then he, got, he hand wrote a letter to me telling me blah blah blah. And uh, how can you? I know I probably Pam is this has already been taken care of via his credit card, and it takes a when you buy something, and this is this pisses you off too. They buy something, credit card, put it through on the website. Okay, we take their money, do what I gotta do now. It's time for a return or a credit or a whatever, right? The credit card company holds it back for a little while 
before it automatically goes back to the to the to the guy who paid for it in the beginning. And guess who's guess who looks bad? And guess who has to deal with the call of hey, I didn't get that credit. Us. So you know, again, another regulation, another pain in the neck, is these credit card comp. But that's a whole nother ball game. Are you with me? So, what does this guy need? He needs a standard 26, 1 and 3 eighths is what he needs. And the size difference, you ask? What is the difference? The difference between ooh and ah and damn it and... and <laughs> All right, here we go. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. 37 by 597, 37 by 590. The Schwinn tire, this is the S5, S6. This is the standard 26, okay? Again, ISO number 590, 597. Just enough to be a real pain in the neck. Now, I shall show you how much of a pain in the neck it is. Let me go get high hose. Should I do it inside or do it outside, son of a? Okay, let's take these two tires outside. Oh, you know what else I'm gonna need? Is a rim strip for high hose wheel. Two tires, two tubes, and two rubber rim strips from yours truly at the bike man. Needless to say, I'm gonna lose some dough on this guy, but you know what, so what? I mean, let's get it over with. Let's, I, you know, the amount of time that goes into this guy, and it's, got, it's been going on for a while. And, I know that Pam helped talk to her, and I don't know. I'll check with it on Monday, but I'm pretty sure. I'm glad I saved the package just because cause that would have went back into inventory, and I would have not known nothing, and it would have just, woo, what is this guy talking about? All right. Um, okay. So we got high hose, 26, 1 and 3 ace standard wheel right here, okay? We're going to put a little rim strip on there, line up the hole. If you guys remember, it had duct tape on some of these. There's electrical tape on some of these, too, just because the wheel was so off-centered. All right. Standard 26 by 1 and 3 eighths. Here it is. Fits on there like a champ. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Fits on there. Let me put the whole thing without a tube on it. All right. That way maybe we'll be able to understand what's going on. No tube. You can see it fits on, there's no gap. We put a tube in there, she would inflate just beautifully. 26, one and three eighths, standard, millions of them. Raleigh's, Huffies, anybody but Schwinn. If they used the 26, one and three eighths, it was this tire or this ISO number. Now, here comes the 1960s, I guess, 50s, and Schwinn decides that they're going to make their tire just a smidgen bigger. Just enough. So now, here's a 26 by 1 and 3 eighths, S5, S6, same deal, same everything. This, and the people call up if they get the wrong tire. It keeps blowing off the rim. Well, it's no wonder, but there's how much. Can you get that, son of a? Hmm? Yes, no, Antonio? Gotcha. So you can see that if somebody tried to put a tube in this, it's just going to blow off the rim as soon as they start to inflate it. Now, if it was the other way around, 
meaning that they didn't know that this tire exists and it was a Schwinn rim that they held onto. Trying to get this tire onto a Schwinn rim, and I got, I don't have a Schwinn rim. Next time I do, I will show you guys. You destroy this tire just trying to get it onto the rim. The bead of the tire. I deal with this too. They ship them back and it's all screwed up along here and you sent me the wrong size tire. This is one of those things that you're just ready to choke the manufacturer. But it's been around for a trillion years, so we have to deal with it. So hats off to my man. He's going to get himself. I'm just going to ship it to him because I just, I don't, I don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm tired of it. The time that is wasted, this guy has got way more time on his hands than he does anything. And again, if he just would double check his credit card, I think it's already by now. It's probably by the time it took. <sighs> it's okay. It's all good. I hope he gets his bike on the road. We need a set of those to go to him. I got that, 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 that. Those other ones can come back out. I'm surprised though, because he needs a set of standards that usually is the other way around. His is the reverse. Very rare that it's that way. So how was that? My man. I had some notes. That's your coffee. That's not mine. Mine's over here. There it is. Campagnola. DI. Campagnola's DI system. Oh, here it is. So we had this really nice call Nago that came in last week. I think I showed you guys. And I think you guys came up with a couple of websites for me to use to decipher how to adjust Campagnola's DI gears. Because obviously, we don't see a lot of DI there. We don't see a lot of DI gears kicking around. So needless to say, even... Um, version we see once in a while but campy's version no never see it other than the trade show but we happen to have one that came in and once you looked at the instructions it wasn't too bad what I think happened yeah, you should be able to see that maybe Coming in right in here, right next to this, you can see this. I'll try to hold it steady. Tell me when you're there. So you got this button here, which actuates it going down the spectrum. And then you have this button over here that actuates it going up. But then underneath the hood, you have a membrane button in the hood that is right there. Right next to it. And that... It's one on each side. And that, depending upon how long you hold that membrane button in, puts it into a gear adjusting mode. And you know that by this little blue light that's going to happen right down here. You can individually adjust the front one and the rear one. You can simultaneously adjust both if you put the, hold them both down. The video goes into it. Again, it's clear as day, but there's a must-have tool to adjust this bicycle. You know what that must-have tool is? The basics. Whether you're working on this old junk 
or whether you're working on this. When you're working on this, it's critical. You've got to have a repair stand, something to jack it up, something to be able to pedal it, something that you're not standing on your head trying to get down there to look at. It makes things so much easier. Park makes a bunch of different repair stands. We happen to have a PCS9 one left in stock. I just rolled that right into that. But you, if you have a repair stand, it just is easier. Now with a real nice bike like this, you have to be careful where you clamp. Do not clamp here. You must clamp here on this bicycle. It's not a bad idea to get into practice of always clamping on the seat post no matter what. Oh, I lost my mic. Sorry. So that was the story on the campy Colnago $10,000 beauty. What must have happened was that he held this thing, he was holding on the hoods or did something, and he pushed that membrane button in. You have to hold it in for like six seconds for it to activate anything. And he must have held it in for six seconds. Then he went to try to make a shift, and he didn't know what the hell was going on. And he probably remembered this, and then he hit that little button, and at that moment, everything was focaced. If he would have went back and retraced his steps and pushed this in for seven more seconds to activate again that adjusting part, then these two buttons act in millimeters, minuscule, like half millimeters, I think it is, this way, or half millimeters this way by adjusting, by hitting the normal shifting levers. Then when you hit this button, then it, you hit the button, then it's the meter dose of the amount that needs to go. Does that make sense? Yeah? No? Kinda? Son of a? A little words of encouragement? <laughs> anyway, if it was a little nicer weather, I'd put this up there and I'd kind of get a little bit more depth, but unfortunately I can't get any more depth. They do a really nice job on some of the videos that are out there. Again, Super Record EPS. Campagnola, light as a feather. This thing is a beautiful bike. Very stylish. Were you guys last week when we had... Uh, oh, this is something I should... I gotta find out. Last week when the guy came in with the Zebra bicycle and I was kind of like pushing him not to fix it. It was a blue piece of junk. Does anybody remember that? It was a zebra racer. It was blue. Well, we finished. Marco finished it yesterday. Marco did a nice job. Took long enough, but it came out pretty nice. This is a bike, man. This thing is a war horse and a half. I can't believe he put 250 bucks into this thing. We put on a new chain. We kind of had to find a new used semi free wheel that would work um, greased it up gassed it up new tires new cables all the way around uh, new grips 250 bucks I don't think it was worth it I tried to discourage him when he did it but you know what so be it let him go he did it the bicycle has got a trillion miles on it you want to hear the story behind this bicycle I'll give you the exact story it was a it even has my sticker on it it was a rental bike. It was a used rental bike back in about 1984, three or four. I was still in high school at the time. It was just before click gears came into play. This bike is friction mode, so that means you have to fine tune it one way or the other, the rear derailleur, to make it in gear. Friction mode all scared people. They didn't understand it, but when I turned it into when you turned it into simple terms like tuning in an FM station, then they got it. Nowadays you say that to some people and they have no clue what you're talking about when you say tuning in an FM station. But that's what this would be like. Friction mode. We sold these bikes by the truckload. We had a truckload sale in the spring. We would buy a boatload of them. They were distributed on Long Island here. And the truck, literally, the semi-tractor trailer, we jacked it up against the side of the house, a side of the uh, hedge over here, and we opened up the back door, and we had 
couple of hundred bicycles inside of this thing. We made a deal with the distributor. Hey, Mr. Distributor, we're going to buy a boatload of these things. We're putting them on a rental rack. We're selling them as a promotion. We had the radio station here. We had it all going on. This is back in the 80s now. This is before social media and going through. The, you had radio. You had print. That's it. And uh, the deal was whatever we didn't sell, he's going to take them back to distribute them. Here comes the spring, blah, blah, blah. We got that going. We did the sale. It was a pretty good success. We probably sold, I think there was probably about 100 and 215 bikes or 230, under 250. And we probably sold 100 and something over the weekend. And then we probably took another 25. So there was about between 80 to 100 bikes left, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, come on back, get that trailer, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, we can't take them back. Now, all of a sudden, this guy goes back on his word. <laughs> oh, Normie, my father was ready to choke the guy. I was ready to choke the guy. I was like that. They said they were going to. We shook hands on it. I was right there in the meeting. <coughs> Sorry, can't take them back. Little did we know that the following year, which were the bikes that he was specking, this system was <laughs> done. You will never see friction gears again after that year. So that's where this thing, and here I am stuck with a hundred of these damn things. It took us quite a few years to get over it. This bike originally came with curl down handlebars. We converted this to one of these. This is our own rat rod special back in 1984. And we used this bike as a rental. The reason I know it was a rental, he said, I bought it for a rental. You know how much I paid for it? He says, I says, $89. He says, that's right. How did you know? I says, because I was stuffed to the gills with this bicycle. I didn't tell him that, and I couldn't wait to get rid of him. We used it for a season, shipped him out for uh, 90 bucks, and done. We probably paid around 90 bucks for him. We were selling for like 149 on sale, 199 uh, regular price, trying to make 50 points, double your money. Can't do that now, not even close. Was I getting rich? No. Was I making a living? Yes. So here it comes back to us for 250 bucks we put into it. Kind of crazy, right? Good story, bad story, I don't know. What do you think? She turned out pretty nice though. I gotta give it to her, all right? It was an all steel. We even, <laughs> I found, we had another one that got disposed of right over here. It came in red and blue. Here's the red one. Again, a converter. We converted this one. This one came to us as a destroyed, I don't know. I haven't thrown it out yet, but we stole the crank off of this one because the crank was bent. So we took the crank off of this and put it onto that one. Same exact crank. But here's a tour bar. We had the ATB bar, <laughs> we had the tour bar, and we just swapped out, took, the, took the, the handlebar, threw them out, and put on new brake levers because the shift levers were on the, on the stem, so it made things easy. <coughs> that was the story on the Zebra Racer. I shouldn't put that out in the rain. We did such a nice job on that. We must take care of it. This guy's, the frame is all, this thing's seen the city. He really loved the bike. It's sentimental to him, so I can see why. Maybe he wanted to. He's got a lot of miles on it. You know, again, he's had this thing for 30 years. Wow, is that right? Let's see, 1980. Let's say he bought that in 86. 86, 30 years. Wow. So that leads us right into the next phase. Giant bicycles. What are we doing for next year? I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. We got a sign out front for sale, for rent. Locals are starting to come around. Hey, Bart, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing, man? You're moving out? What are you doing? Rah, rah, rah. No, not really. Yeah, kind of. It's just getting so tougher and tougher to compete and deal with all the regulations and then the companies and the this and the that. So, if we can find somebody that would like to purchase it and try to do their thing and spend that energy and do what they got to do, by all means, we're there. Now, if... Is this computer going to work for us today, or what's the story? I didn't even try this thing out today. Oh, here we go. Let me get rid of this. You're going to have to wait a second here. 
worst case scenario for next year is that we're going to fix bikes only. Why is that the worst? Not the worst. Well, the worst case scenario would be if, if the door was closed and nobody was here at all and it was empty. Okay. That w I guess that would be the worst case that scenario. Would be the worst of the worst. All right, I'll buy that. That's Freddy. Freddy's saying the worst of the worst would be that this place closes and nobody's here at all. Worst case scenario for me is that we're open and we're fixing bicycles. And it's not the end of the world for me. It's a, it'll keep me, keep me busy, that's for sure. We, probably Mark and I will be here doing it. You won't even have to do it except just make sure the park is too. I, yeah, that's, oh, so here we, here we go now. Here we go. Mark and Freddie are going to take over here, which is, hey, this is all a possibility. We're talking about this stuff. It, this is all brand new to me, boys and girls. This all is, I got to worry about is, is the tubes are over oh, here. Okay, so Freddie doesn't want to have to deal with <laughs> the ordering. <laughs> So if Freddie wants to stand there and say, sure, I'll fix your flat tire. <laughs> Here you go, flat tire fixed. Bucks. <laughs> yeah, this is what Freddie wants to do. Now, well, I mean, do you know how many different sizes of these that we have? Do you know how many? Uh, oh, yeah. So Freddie doesn't want to do can't. anything to do with that seat over there. I can't even find the ones I need to put in the tire. So ex <laughs> there's a lot of different tubes. If you're going to do it right, there's a lot of different tubes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they so, fit, but they're not right. And... So, you know, there's all kinds of options here, all right? But, you know, that's the worst case scenario for me. Now I have to make sure and, oh boy, well, whatever. So, what do we do about selling bicycles? This is what the big thing is. We don't want to sell bicycles anymore. Here's a classic example of why I don't want to sell bicycles anymore, right here. Actually, this is not the one, but I have one in the next size down, which is a small. This happens to be a large, not in the next size down, two sizes down. This is the Live Avail road bike, women specific. Had two of them in stock from the beginning of the season all the way through to the end, and I still have them. I'm going to put them on eBay. Now I can because it's outdated inventory, and I'm going to sell them at cost, and they're going to be gone. But this is mandatory. I had to take one. I took one, and then this woman was a tall woman. She says, oh, can you get me the large? Yeah, did. I did, and I did. I got it a large, and she tried it, and I really don't like it. I'm like, oh. Okay. But didn't we sell one of those? No, we, we did not sell an avail. Single one not a single avail. We sold some road bikes. The other ones, the black. The, the black, one. the content. Right. right. But the avail, lady specific, which was mandatory. Bend over, here it comes again from Giant. You have to have this. So, you know comes back to our original position of what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It wasn't even a gay guy that would buy that. Uh, <laughs> nothing. That's too bad. So, anyway, I thought, I, I thought the large rode nicely. I rode the large. It was really it, nice. Isn't it essentially the exact same bike? It's similar. There's a little different geometry. It's a little bit different. The frame is actually different. Yes, there's a little geometry different to make it a little bit more compact for a woman. They put the they put the they put the levers up there and a couple of other things. So, you know, the color is you know obviously very feminine and but I <laughs> the the large rode like a dream man. I I would ride the large. It's a nice bike. It's got the inside shifters. Yeah, uh, inside brake levers. Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad little bike for the money. It's sweet. It's sweet. So now what are we gonna do? So what are we gonna do? Mr. Customer comes in next year, and it's going to be tough if we have to. Now, this is all here. This is all hypothetical and if, and I'm not, you know, I'm getting it a lot online. What are you going to do? I can't believe it. Customers are coming by. Oh, it's so sad. Have hey. A bunch of vintage bikes for sale. I, I, yeah, we're going to we're have some used bikes, but the amount of time that it takes to, number one, Order the bikes, take them in, stock them, put them together, and then sell them. Four things. Oh, and store them, too. If they're not, so, right. That's huge. And you have to have all of these things combined, and they're only allowing you to make 30%, if you're lucky. And when we put a lot of bikes out on the weekend, you add that time up over the course of the whole season, 
it's the, the time just rolling them in and rolling them out is huge. Okay, rolling them in and rolling them out. But what about the what about hi, Mr. Customer? What oh, can yeah. I do for oh, you? Yeah, really. Okay, there's a situation there. There you're looking at at least a half an hour minimum. Yeah, and sometimes hours. Sometime sometimes hours. Sometimes days. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, sometimes they come back next week and you have to do it all over again. Yeah. Okay, it's tough. So what do we do? All right. So here's what here's an idea. Here's an idea. It's tough not to lose it. Okay. <laughs> lose what? Lose it, lose your head, or lose yeah. the sale, or lose uh, lose your mind, lose or lose control. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So hear me out on this one, Frederick. Yeah. So let me get to where I got to get to. They'll still buy the pool things, though. No. Um, no, no, I'm not selling pool not floats selling either. Pool floats either. No way. I'm done with that. Good. I'm done with it. I just, again, what a pain in the neck. Inflate them, take them in, take them out. And I still got a whole bunch left. And now that's going to hang around. I get you, I got stuff that was hanging around from yeah, last yeah. year. In fact, yeah, I do. Over here, I do. Yeah. That's only $5 now. Enough of that. Okay. So, so here we go. Frederick. Mr. Customer, hi, how are you? I'm so, yes, we sell by yes, we do sell new bicycles. It is on a this is where the wording and this is where we're going to have to start to work on certain things. Uh, we sell them on a per order basis, a order them this week, pick them up next week. Do we have anything in sizes? Do we Hey, just come on right in and let and then we bring them to either a some sort of a small couch kiosk with a nice computer screen and say, "Okay, Mr. Customer, you are looking for a bike." So, Frederick, you are looking for a bike. I'm going to now click on giantbicycle.com. I'm on Giant Bicycles. I click on their bike. Now, Mr. Customer, what would you like? Would you like road X-road, off-road, e-bike, or youth? What kind of riding are you going to do, Mr. Ru Mr. Customer? Off-road. You're going to go off-road. And off you're ready road. to go in the trails and do single track. That's going, what I'm doing. That's what you would like to do. Right. Okay. So, Mr. Off-road, we're going to come over here to the off-road section. Yes, come on right in. Can I get you a cup of coffee, Mr. Mm, Customer? No, Can I, I get you water? I Can tea. I get you... What, would you, what would you like? Right? Give me a tea. Now, you got to make sure you stay out of the <laughs> way of the camera because we're playing yeah. customer. they got to be able tea. to see this. All right? Give me a tea. Tea. How do you like your tea? Right? So, you're basically... you're Now, you're developing a rapport with your customer. Again, we're trying to get our money out of his pocket before... He even sees the product, okay? And, and also, he's not going to... Now, Mr. Customer, what do you have a price in mind? Do you have any kind of a budget at all? Because, you know, some of these bikes, and as you're, as you're saying this, you're strolling well, it down in their yeah, well, Anthem, you know, right, yeah. four to 8,000, no, 2,000. What do you, what do you five to 700. Five to 700. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you there. Yeah, you're just getting into the game. You want to start to do this a little bit. Uh, I, I, I understand. I understand. You don't want to get, you want to see what starts. You know, Mr. Customer, if you get into this sport, you're going to be buying a new bike and, you know, probably th two to five years you know so one of the bikes that I one of the bikes that I really like mr. customer and this is where you can steer them into it and you're gonna be able to steer them into certain bicycles such as the Talon here's a 2018 Talon here's the 2017 Talon they're roughly the same type of price points so you could push them into a talent he said how much did you say again? five to seven hundred that's five right, to seven hundred right so uh, yeah I'm in that category now the next thing you got to find out is is he a big guy does he want a 29er and then you might have to explain to him here's a 29er here's this right, right? So then he might go into this and, you know, again, you might stand there and, and, and hold his hand a little bit and, you know, okay, well, here's some higher end, some one model, one model, ATX, Revel. Uh, the Revel is your entry level. This is what we normally were stocking last year, but he wanted to go to that five to 700. So here comes your talent, two models. I have boiled it down now for him for two models. Now, is he going to be able to say, oh, blah, 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 blah. So now it's going to come to the next questions of, oh, well, what are you thinking oh, here? Which one do you like, well, you know? I really like the bike, but I, 
I'm having a problem because it just looks like a bike on the screen to me, and I don't know what it looks like. Now, you have, this do you have a, a customer's bike out there that you're repairing that I can just look yeah, at it maybe? Yeah. No, I don't have that. I don't have. See wheel looks like? No, I don't. This well, is going to be the tough part. Yeah, this is the, the tough, tough part. part. This well, is going to be the salesman part, okay? Maybe. What do you ride now? Yeah, yeah. You know, okay, so now this is, he's coming into questions of what is the size? What size What's do I What's a 29-inch wheel look like? Yeah, so yeah. do you even bring that? that up to him okay so now again let's say he likes just the look of that let's say he we went to the next step okay what color does it come in <laughs> exactly what colors does it come in okay so here we are there's seven you can't tell him anything about the price because there it is he can't bargain with you because you're going to collect it all up front baby yeah. okay uh, you can tell him that if you would like to do it on the giant credit card of a firm, it's only $66 a month if you would like, blah, 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 blah. Colors are matte black Leon yellow, which is what this is, or a satin blue black. Satin blue black looks like, oh, we clicked it. My computer's a little slow. Come on, baby. Satin blue black. Right here. You're telling me their website isn't working right? I can scroll up and down. It should go. There it is. There it is. Satin blue black. Okay, I kind of like that. Now, what's your size? Sizes are small, medium, large, extra large. All of them are in stock. No problem, Mr. Customer. Well, I don't know what my old bike is. I don't know what this is. Okay, so here we go. What's my size? They put a little, a little asterisk in here. So we click on that, and then it's going to give you sizing and geometry. Sizing is used to be as a reference only. Please check with the local. Whoops. Sorry. Where was I? Please check with a local authorized live or giant dealer to determine the correct size available. Sizes available may vary from country to country. Oh, goody. Well, in the United States... A medium is from 5'8 to 5'11. A large is from 5'11 to 6'2. Now here's where it, that's the height of the person. This is what it's going to come down to. It's not even going to come down to how does it feel or how does this, how does that. So Frederick, so you're, a, a you're medium. medium. Done. A medium. So absolutely, Mr. Customer. Yeah, you're going to need a medium. Myself, I'm about 5'11". I'm right on the edge. I happen to like the large one because right. blah, 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 right. blah. So you could go into that, blah, blah, blah. If they're right on the edge, depending upon who. It... When's it going to be here? It's going to be here for you. You're only out on the weekends? Yeah. I'll have it for you next weekend, sir. Nice. So then you would go through. I'll uh, get it up there. Am I locked in? If I think it sucks, do I have to buy it? Uh, you're, no, uh, Mr. Customer, you are going to purchase that bicycle right now. We're going to get out your credit card. It's going to be a addressed to you. It's, you are responsible for that. Right. We are here right. to help you so there's no, 100%. There's no wiggle room. <laughs> We're here to help you right. 100%. Right. Um, if there is a problem, we will help, help you right. in contact with right. the manufacturer. Right. You don't want to tell them no, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you are locked in forever and ever. Um, again, it, it comes down to your reputation as a dealer now. Why wouldn't he? Now, have you qualified this guy? Is he going to, because basically he's going to pay, this is the way I, and if it works, I don't know if it's going to work. But th is this the way the future's going? I don't it know. Might, Do you it might just be, oh, next week, that sucks. I'm going to rotations. That might be. Now, I thought about another, I got another yeah, idea. I got another idea on this one too, Fred, right? Now, I, I've been thinking about this. So, if you, you might, now, how long would it take for you to walk them through with the computer and operating the computer and talking right. with them? Again, you're going to have a captive audience. You're going to be sitting down with them. You're not going to be able to do like you used to. There's a total change of business plan here, a total change in, in you know, right. everything. You know, in here will not be accessories. It'll be a small little kiosk with a yeah, computer yeah, screen, yeah. you know, for the person to sit down and have a drink and you talk with them and you've got them captive. How long would you try to expect to engage with that customer and be able to close the deal on the computer? Half hour? It's a whole different deal. A whole, it's a whole nother ballgame. So is it going to work? I don't know. Now, he just happened to pick a bike that we would normally not have to begin with. Okay, we wouldn't have that. Now but let's. It does open up a whole new world to the customer. 
Yeah, Cause yeah. Because I, I might say, I want to go in the five to 700, and then after I look at them, I might say, oh man, maybe I'll spend 35. Who knows? Wow, I didn't realize that they, you know, I didn't realize. Exactly. Look at all those different bicycles. Right. What's the difference between 700 and 3,500? So now you're going to have to get into yeah. there and start to read to them yeah. through yeah. the computer screen what's going on and explain to that in layman terms exactly. what the hell it is exactly. and what it's, what's going to be beneficial to them or them. Right. So it's really going to start to become, you're going to have to become a real, a real snake oil salesman. If you didn't think, if you thought you were a snake oil salesman before, right. Now you really got to turn on this. And again, being a salesman is almost, it's almost as bad as being a cop. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> People's perception of a salesman is right up there ranking with the, the uncomfortableness yeah. from being pulled over by a cop. Yeah. I got out of that. Well, yeah, but but I, you know I, what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. I hate being, I hate, I hate going to buy a car because these salesmen, they just, you know, I just hate sales. I, I hate salesmen. So how can I be one if I hate the damn guys? Yeah, when I walk in PC Richards, I just say, get, go, <laughs> go well, away. Uh, or on the other side yeah. of the coin, yeah. I walked into PC Richards the other day and I said, yeah, I want you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Yeah. Here's what I need. Yeah. I got a rental house. I need a stove. Yeah. I need a, and it was yeah. just the other day. Works. And he, okay, well, how much do you want? I says, listen, pal, it's a rental house. So then right. I became, and you know what? Whatever this guy said, I was going with because he understood. Right. I told him straight out. He could tell I was a, a I would, a note, you know, I got cash in my pocket. Let's go. Right. And that was okay then. But if I were just looking around there for my own and I want to see this or I want to see that, you know what I'm saying? It goes crazy, crazy. Well, Here we go. How are you doing? We got Mr. Carbone in the house. Good, good, good. Good to see you. The man for the call, Nago. Wow, it's some bike. Yeah. All right, we figured out what happened. Oh, that's good. Hey, how are, how are you? you? Good, how are you doing? Dun, dun, dun. No. And the thing is, what do I think it is? I don't know. It's, it's light, light. All right. So, like we talked about, it is an electronic shifting that has to be charged on occasion. And there's the charge. Yes, there is a charging port that's underneath here. He should understand how that works. Right there. Plug it in. Correct. Okay. He has some sort of something. Yeah. Somebody showed him that. There is a mode sensor. This is the brains of it, and there's a little light right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see it. All right. Now there's two membrane buttons, one right there. Yeah. And one right there. Okay. The membrane buttons have to be pushed in for seven seconds for it to do anything. Before you even start riding this thing. No. To adjust anything. So every time you want to adjust. No. Nope. Just no, when you start. kinda. No, no. not even. <laughs> what he did was he was riding along and he pushed this button in for seven seconds. Yeah. And then let off of it. Okay. He didn't realize it. Maybe he was riding on the hoods. Who knows? Yeah. But then that put this derailleur, which controls here, into the adjustment mode. Oh my God. Do you have to do both of them? Not necessarily. <laughs> if it's adjust, right now it's adjusted to the T. If he doesn't touch this button, everything is perfect. Okay, good. So don't touch the bike. Don't touch the button. But on occasion, maybe if the bike fell over like we were talking about or this or that and we get on it and it starts to grind, the derailleur is not exact. It has to be adjusted. It has to be adjusted. And there's no like screwing in or cable tension on this. It's a servo. Jesus. Okay. When we hit this button right now, the servo goes two millimeters to the next cog. Okay. You with me? Yeah, yeah. If I hit this button, it goes down two millimeters to the following cog down there, right? Okay. So if I hit this button right here, now all of a sudden, these buttons are moving at minuscule amounts. Because of the adjustment. The now it's in the adjustment mode. Oh, Jesus. So you don't want to do that. When you're all right. Brother, well, not, sometimes you're down the middle of the road. He's you don't know, though. You hear it in the sound or this yeah. or that. OK, so you might well, on the fly. This is meant to be on the fly. Push yeah. it in for seven seconds. Now, yeah, you know, you're adjustment. in the adjustment, adjustment mode. Sure. I can make my little adjustment. Either here. one. This one. It works for one? either one. But this okay. one's only got two positions. You really don't have to worry also, about this, this one one's at all. For the big one. The front one. And this one's for the rear one. Correct. Correct. That's standard. Right is for rear. Left is for front on bicycles for the last 
centuries. Okay. okay? But again, yeah, I know. This is, it is, I explained all of this. You are on video right this second, as a matter of fact. We are streaming live on YouTube. I went through all of this this morning on there, and there is a bunch of videos on Super Record EPS Campagnola is the manufacturer. If you need to know how to spell it, there it is, okay? If you go into that, that's what we did. S sat through about 30 minutes worth of videos, put it up in a rack, says, because we don't see this that often. No. You know, I see this at the trade year. show and that's it. Yeah. You know, the Shimano version we see a little bit more, but the Campy, the super Italian stuff, we don't see that often. It's amazing they went into electronics. <sighs> it's a nightmare for a lot of guys. A lot of mechanics, so this it's is a nightmare. All electronics. That's correct. All electronics. Correct. So it, it's a cable. There's a wire, a not wire. a cable, yeah, a right, wire, right, right, a thin right. little itty bitty wire. That's <laughs> yeah. what runs this thing. That's what runs the thing. And there's a battery. And this is what changes the derailleur. The derailleur, okay. right. You yep. press it once and it moves over. Yeah. One or the other. There you okay. go. Now that we explain all this. Might as well, might as well. Especially if we're on um, streaming. Well, there you go. This is the chainsaw they use when you get really upset. <laughs> with, with carbon fiber bicycles, yeah. Take it and just go. <laughs> Must make good TV. All right. So, come on over to my side. Right. We are going to be pedaling when we shift, right? Always, right? right? Always, yeah. So here we go. We're going to go up the spectrum. It's going to hit this little guy right here. Once. Okay. Every time you hit it, beautiful. No sound, nothing. It actually shifts it up and then comes back just a smidge if you watch it carefully. Okay? Yeah, because that way it makes a clean Correct. shift. Correct. And then it has to be centered. Now it's going to come uh, back down again. Now this that's this which, button right here. Which one did you press? I was start? pushing this one right here. Oh, okay. All right. And that's the down button. And this is the down one. So now we push that one. Once it goes down. The more I push it, the more it goes down. Yeah. So now you can see what I'm talking about is it moves yeah. exact motions. Perfect. So now when I hit this button to put it into adjustment mode, now it goes to whatever, how many ever you want to get it to, to whatever, hit the button again, boom, it locks in. Hit it for seven seconds. And All right, you want to see what I'm talking about? No, 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 no. just tell me. I don't there it is saying. right there. I know that you press it for seven seconds. And, and this light's going to go on. And then in adjustment mode. And then it just moves it. Just remember the old school oh, 10 so speeds when you had to off when it's right. Correct. Got it. Then it's that's the, not, it, that's the part I missed. The friction modes of the bikes when we rode when we were kids. I was just showing the, the other, you know, where you had, that, the, you had to hit the one side or the other just a little bit yeah. to smooth it out because you yeah, would hear yeah, that yeah. clunk, clunk, clunk. That's what would happen if you put it exactly into the adjustment was. mode. Yeah. There you go. There, you there's the way. Like oh, my sure. God. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> this is what I'm saying because, like, well, this is what happened. He either hit the button or it wasn't ever quietly adju properly or adjusted to begin with, or he didn't understand, and he said blah, 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 blah. But this thing, it's mint. I mean, if this thing has 100 miles on it, that's no, a lot. No, if it has 10 miles on it, that's yeah. a lot. I don't yeah. think he ever wrote it. Yeah. So we, you know, and then, of course, he made noise, and then he started to gook it up with gook, <laughs> lubrication. And you shouldn't, you know, again, a bike like this, you know, leave it alone. Right now, we got a little bit of, you can see how much yeah, we got yeah, on there. Yeah. It's a dry type of lube. To keep crap off it. Uh, we use a wax actually. A wax? Yeah. yeah. Works better. Works better. Hangs on better. Yeah. Does it just badly? Exactly. For our sandy conditions and whatnot, it's much easier to use a wax than let's say some other type of base. Bart, there was a time when I basically pulled apart bikes and put them together. I know. We this all did. Been a lot of time. It's now you need this a degree of rocket science. Well again, no, you know, I see maybe half a dozen of this caliber of bike a year. Yeah. You know, between coming in for repair or Whatever it may be. So I appreciate the the fun, you know. Twenty bucks. You know, I have to tell you, between you and your dad, we were talking and we brought our bikes. Just like I love, I always loved coming here. I loved seeing your dad and, Thank and you. you as well. And it's sad to Thank see you. that you yeah, want to do sure. something else. Times, times are changing. Yeah. You buying coffee? I coffee for you, um, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Times are changing, though, my dear. Yeah. yeah, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Do you sell this place? Can you sell it as a business? That's the question. You know, you know? Stay a business. We love. I would love to say, here you go. Here it is. I'll gonna right. You pay rent. 
going to need somebody on a Saturday, I can tell you right now. I'd be lost <laughs> if I didn't work on a Saturday in the summer. I'll be honest, man. I really don't want to have to deal with the summer down, down there. I'll go to the beach on a Saturday? Shit, That's me. No way! We, we work Saturdays year-round. We teach skiing on Saturdays. Uh-huh. And I run a beach club on Saturdays. Because Saturdays are busy. Exactly. So I just soon work. Yeah. With you. During the week. That's that's when that's when it's our time. Exactly. Skiing on but, a weekday, there's nobody there. That's Beach it. on a weekday, there's perfect. nobody there. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah. But those are the you know Sundays that's too, by the way. Yeah. So you know if if we could both. do that, if we could do that, that would be great. If we can't have somebody that's going to you know, and then obviously after a commit, we'd work it out. You know, mm -hmm. we'd work it out. It's just I'm done. I can't do it hours a week anymore. Yeah. I just I just don't want. It's a lot. But you're order. so cool, and yeah. you've done. That's a great job. Thank you. Yeah, it's Thank you. It's always fun coming yeah. here. And yeah. so Thank many you. people always say, oh, yeah, we went to bike. We were you. talking about when we got our kids when they were little. We were going to Black Island. We came here, and your dad helped the boys with getting helmets. We had fun okay. getting before helmets. Before you had to wear, wear helmets. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going over there with those boys without helmets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was so always a pleasure to come here. You, know, you made so my day. Just, you made well, my no, day. You guys always made our day when we came here. Yeah, we, so. we left with more smiles on our faces. Oh, that's great. You know, that's the kids great. would wear the helmets because they had such a funny time here. So they made, we made the helmet fun and not to wear. Yeah. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know? All right. right. And yeah. this was probably, like you said, now it's it all mandatory. Our boys were like four and two or maybe no, no, three no. and five yeah. or five and... Right, they were just riding two wheels. And now they're in their 30s. So. Yeah, it's scary, huh? Yeah. It's scary yeah, how Kurt quickly Yeah, Kurt was just on by. a two-wheeler, so he must have been four. <laughs> he picked it up early. He was always the one that picked it up early. Brad was always a little later. Yeah. yeah. But it was, it was all cool. So, yeah. so you know, sp spread the word. I mean, you know, worst case scenario, if I have to, we were just talking about that. We're going to fix bikes next year. We're not going to sell. The manufacturing and the selling and the, the, the way the manufacturers are and, and yeah, how right competitive it is. Exactly. Yeah. But again, scaling it way down. Uh, and so then it's anyways. done. It's, it's done when it's done. It's, you know, it's, uh, if you want, it'll free up a lot of time because you're not going to be selling bikes either. So you're not going to have to put them together. So if you work a couple of days in the week, during the week when you're closed to get the repairs done for that weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm also got a couple of jobs lined up that are, you know, well, good. quote unquote, real jobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, this ought to be it. <laughs> you know, this, this ought to be interesting, but you know, consultant slash been doing this? forty-one. Wow. Yeah, it so started, you started start, with ten. Your dad. Ten. I was ten. Five thousand. Five thousand dollars on the kitchen table, of my money on t ten years old, and we were all third partners. Yeah, that's really? how the whole thing went down. Yeah, yeah. I sold Ooh. out when I was eighteen, and then sold I came. Out. I sold out. I had to get out because I knew everything. Did. I was eighteen. Well, how long did you leave? About a year and a half, two years. And then you came back. I came back and they sold it to me back for what I had, what oh I had sold. What I, and yeah. your mom? Yeah. 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 Remember, yeah. yeah. So that was all good. It's all good. Dad. And your dad had that beat up truck. Uh, well, we still got our Model A. It's in the barn over here. Our, our Ford yeah. Model A is yeah. over here. And then we got this one, which I don't know. We're going to get back on that now. We've got a little uh, spare time, you know. We're thinking about putting that in the barn here for the wintertime, little wintertime project. So. Good, you have something to do. Yeah. yeah, there's always something to do, you know. Right. But you also, you've changed, you've changed from one position from to another. I went to Surf Club. Right, but how long were you at the Swordfish? You had to be six years. Okay, almost 40 years there. I was four years at another place, so that was a uh, sandbar. I ran sandbar for four years, and I ran Surfish. So I was 40 years running two different clubs. So this is my third management job. But I love it, Surf Club. We have so many nice... Um, things about it that we really like. Surf we're clubs, really well, both those clubs have been around oh, for yeah, a trillion yeah, years. And they're both, they're both great communities. Yeah, great yeah, people. yeah, so. yeah. And they have their little... I mean, no, they it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool community. The area is a cool community. <laughs> Everybody says it's changed, but yet there's still some stuff that's just not, you know, it's never going to change. You know? It's changing as there's money here. There's a lot more money than there was. Not as spending it as much, but it's here. You okay, it. I'm with you. The houses, oh my God. I hear you. The houses are being sold for. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I thank goodness. Thank goodness. That's one of the things I did right was buy, invest in real estate. That enabled me to be calling it game over at 51 if I want to. Those houses are so freaking expensive. Yeah. Young people can't come here. That's the next scary thing. What do we do about that? Everyone has to. It's still.
community, school's still busy, which means people are living here. I wish, I wish the village or the town or just something to have some sort of a affordable housing area, something for the young the people. Young, the, the uh, you know, let, where can we, where can we do that? And then, you know, they did that up there at Jennifer's Path and up and in there when they bought in and they had to hold it for X, Y, Z amount of years. And it was, you know, a lottery and all of that. Yeah, right. And now those houses are worth, you know, yeah. astronomical amounts. Anywhere, anywhere. You know, so, you know, you got to try to keep that to a minimum. But then again, you know, the regulation is killer. If you're not pre-existing in the store, you know, do you really need to have apartments that have to be 1,500 square feet mm -hmm. per? That's big. That's big. That's big. Or a thousand. thousand. You know, my wife and I, we lived, up, we lived upstairs in here for 10 years in order to save money to buy our first house together, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And upstairs here was, you know, 550 square feet. <laughs> It's four rooms at 100 square feet apiece, you know? I get it. I don't get it. I don't, you know, but we got to, we, so what I'm, the government, we got to get this, you know, yeah, we need a sewer. Do you think we need a sewer? Uh, huh? Expensive project. Why do we, I know, but you know what? You will plot, you, you approved a $14 million for a firehouse. That's, oh, that's, that's the that's, hard part. That's the part that kind of blows me. Did you need to spend did you get any now I happen to be a member of our West Hampton Beach Fire Department for 20 something years okay I am a retired member or a, a non-active member but did your services go up any better by us building a 14 million dollar firehouse no. are our response rates any quicker I mean our response rates are great everything is great we're doing great but did we need that Oh, it was hard for me to swallow, and I'm up there bitching about it, and everybody's ready to choke me. Well, but yet, you know, is they have a nice old clubhouse. <laughs> is that? It, it's just a lot of money for that. Like, so, exactly. So let's put the 15 million into a sewer system that's yeah. going to bet everybody, everybody's yeah. property value. I don't care if you're not getting the service. You look at you look at the bays. How, how that is the next thing. And that's because of all the affluent and also the affluent too, and the. Um, Nitrate from the lawn, and it, you know that's what's causing the brown top. Okay, it's cooking. Yeah, the bay, and I agree. I agree. I uh, to get that sewage out of the, the stream, and uh, then we got. And then we then, but that's going to allow more people to come downtown to be able to maybe eat. Because that's the whole bottom line. We got to get people, you know, because you're not selling anything anymore. You want to buy something, you go on the internet. Yep. That's why buying bike on the internet is happening, right? That's and this really is why I'm not going to sell, you know, you bikes. On. Oh my gosh! And I'm on the internet game. I play that game. I know you do. You, you know, know, but it's it's extremely it's extremely competitive. You know, and you got to stay on top of it one thousand times. Like, oh, <laughs> please, sir, can I have another? You know. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, guys. I want you to enjoy. Good to see you guys, and thank you for your support, and thank you for your kind words. It really, uh, you, 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 you made my day today. Uh, we'll be around. I'm, I'm not leaving the area. <laughs> see you guys. I can only imagine the comments now. Bring it on home. Yeah, they're talking about Detroit. Detroit. I didn't even take yesterday's tickets out of here. Three. Good day yesterday, although we did sell a bike yesterday, so. And we got our repairs done. All right, so bringing it on home. Oh, I didn't even expect to go this long, bring it on home. It's actually, the weather is starting to get better. We made lunch money. It's still raining though. So we're moving forward with High Hose Bike um, to the tune of rear wheel and the rest of this thing and the crank. We have a donor bike and a regular bike. The donor bike has the crank on it that we need. Shall we see if we can get it out off? I guess. 
maybe. Kinda. I guess. Let's see if she pops off. I wish she would have gave me a seat post. Uh, you know what? We'll throw it on the top part. It's not like we're going to be beating on it too badly. All right. And actually, you might be able to see it actually from there. All right, we got a crank and a cartered crank on this thing. The cartered crank <clears throat> How long are these How long ago did we buy these towels from Price Club, Antonio? Do you remember? Middle of August. So they've been around for a Six weeks, a month, month, two months, middle of August, middle of September, middle, two months. Two months, and we got probably another six or eight left. That wasn't too bad, I guess, Heat of, height of the season. All right, we got two nuts that are on here that are holding the carter pins in place. This is what you call a cartered crank, and one of them just spun away on me. <clears throat> so let's get this side undone that side looks like it's been jammed on there a couple of times they are 11 millimeter fits on there nice nicely it's not any kind of british standard or anything funky but it is all gunked up with like petrified grease or dirt or whatever so it doesn't thread on by hand and we got a little washer here let's put that up here put that up here let me go get my other nut Ugh. This one has been beat on pretty good, beat on to the tune that it's it's peened and it's beat up and it's kind of mushroomed on the end. The other one is looking a little bit peened on it. It definitely took a little shot, and uh, and that's kind of where I'm at. This has got a little washer going on here. I don't. It looks like one washer was different than the other washer. We have to be extremely Sherlocky, <laughs> extreme Sherlocky on these bi on this bicycle because of the. Th the, of all of the curves that we've been getting thrown with all of that. Now this washer, I'm literally prying off of here. Why? I have no idea. <clears throat> oh, look at this. This is interesting. It's some sort of a shoulder deal that's holding... Oh boy. Never seen that before. This is homemade. That's why that one's not in as far as the I, ooh, uh, either that or the threads are oh boy, I'm not sure what to think about that. Let me get a little sip of courage. All right, now we got to get these pins out. On occasion, these pins have been a real pain in the neck. I'm just going to take one of these nuts and I'm just going to place it on top of here for a half a second. I'm going to thread it down pretty far. Not so far that it's actually t bottoming out on there. Just enough to come all the way to cover the thread. I'm going to take a pretty good size hammer. We're going to give it a little crack. Look at the large 10 ounce ball peen, I think it is. Give it a little crack. No way. No way. Okay. No bad. I have a I think. I could use these. There she is. 
Hello, sweetie. All right. So now we're going to use our... Pin. Carter pin. Carter key. Carter. Carter crank pin. I don't even know what the heck that technical term is for that thing. I can only get them in two sizes. You might have to modify. I think I can get them in big and small. Oh, you're never going to believe this, but one little one, two, three, and she just pressed right out, man. I made contact. I didn't even have to give it a crack with a hammer or nothing. Maybe it's because we loosened her up beforehand. I don't know. So good. The other side could be a problem. All right, that came right off, boys and girls. Oh look, we got even a little something that says we got a little insignia on here. B R A M P T O N, Brompton, made in England. That's who made this crank. It says so right on it. Anybody want to look that up for me? Look at this. We got some in. We got a little something on these pedals too. Let's look this up too while we're at it. D D D. I can't see that one though because it's got gunk on it. I need a little wire brush. Any nice new wire brush? Little baby, want new wire brushes? Keep it around. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Still raining. Made in England. That's all it says on the pedal. Made in England. Nothing else. It's a really old pedal. Hmm. All right. Dino Hub. That also was made in England. All right, we'll leave that there. Let's get the other side off. Do you think this bottom bracket's going to come out of here or what? Let me spin it around. I can't believe how easy that drive side came off. Now this one is all kinds of mishmodled on this side. It's oh, it's beat up bad. Bad to the tune it doesn't even fit in the... Uh, Oh, yeah. You know what sucks about getting old is your eyes. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see when I get bent over. And it would come out like the other one. Come on, come on. I talked to it a little bit. Oh, yeah. I think we got her. Do doodly. Let me just get this a little crack. Done. Done, son. Hmm. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> okay. That might explain why we got that going on there. It's all worn out. So we needed something to jock it up. Slammed it home. Oh, this thing's terrible. All right, so we're gonna need new pins, but let's save those in case we need it for size or whatever. The other side, same thing, Brompton. Steel, archaic, old as the hill. You're welcome. Oh man. What do you think's inside of this thing? Is it something yet? Bayless. Bayless Willie. Willie Willie. Is that X or Y? Oh, this bottom bracket's been beat to crap, too. What do you want? The thing is ancient. See if this old this old stuff is gonna work. Come off. That fit. Yeah, that's gonna work pretty good. Let me go on the rubber mat here for a second. No problem. No problem, boys and girls. Getting in close here, you can't wait to see what's inside. It's like opening up Pandora's box. Ball bearings and petrified grease. Did you expect something different? <laughs> More bull bearings and petrified grease and like like dirt. Oh, one more. And bits and hunks of cheeses of petrified grease. Alright. You know what you're supposed to have when you're doing projects like this, right guys? If you're an old time viewer and you remember from many, many moons ago. You know what you need? You need to have a box. You got to have a box. And hi-ho is pretty particular, so we gotta save everything for hi-ho, because hi-ho is the same guy that saves everything. So you gotta have a box. For some of these smaller things, we're gonna put it into a little bag. Now we're kind of working on this bottom bracket, and we'll be working on the bottom bracket, bottom bracket. So we'll use this little box for now. What do you got? Anything good? Uh, they're talking about petrified grease. Steel or ceramic. Yeah. Oh, boy. This thing 
All right, so we got that adjustable side came right out. I'm gonna put all the ball bearings in one of these little bags. Just so that hi-ho wants to learn or whatever. He might be watching right this very second. Bike man, did you save those bear bearings? Yes, I did. Where are they? Right here. Ta-da! Ta-da! Always give the customer back the old parts in the box. Petrified grease, big time. Some of it is still kind of there, but some of it is just like like putty almost. It's hurting. Hurting. The whole thing is hurting. All right. This is the donor bike, though, by the way. All right, this is going into here, this is going into here. This is all one bottom bracket, so we'll put that into a separate. Now, let's see if we can get that fixed cup side out for kicks. Do I have the right wrench to fit that on the fixed cup side? Flats. It's a little bit bigger than what this is. This is a 35. <clears throat> so, like, 36. Buy that? 36. go boys and girls 36 it is <clears throat> it's loose it's kind of come right out all right that's a plus finger tight in there. Why was that so finger easy? Oh. All right. It's all that white powdery crap that's in there. All right. There you have it. I didn't expect it to be that easy. I expected it to be cursing and all kinds of good stuff. All right, that goes in the box. Now, this is the original crank, the original bottom bracket to the Greyhound. Original pedals. We have everything together into one thing. Oh, I need another Ziploc bag for these. Let's just take a quickie look at these for a minute. D D D D. The donor bike can almost get hung back up. We don't have to worry about it ever again. All right, we'll give you a little, a little, a little, uh, a little briefing on that, and then we'll round her up. We're getting close. I'm getting close. I want to go two hours. Getting close. Doing good. Um, um, um. All right. Let me see if I got some of these before I start yakking. Yeah, we got some. And I got a whole bunch of other ones in there, too. All right. All right, there's the old stuff that came out. Here comes some of the new stuff. Now these are various different new stuff that I've had, and I'm not sure if they're just what's what's what and what bag what's in the bag. But we got nuts, we got butt, we got we got nuts, we got pins, we got washers, and I got that. Oh no, those are dust covers. And then I got this in another bag. This is probably another size. I got to go find my calipers, and we're going to discuss. What the heck is going on here? These are cheap Chinese made real junk. These things are, if you can, if you can get the old ones out, 
whole, the quality of the old ones are way better than the new ones. Like night and day. Okay. Let me take this and this. So that way everybody can see what the heck is going on. This side. Okay, this is old school bottom bracket. You, one's longer than the other. You can see how the difference is between those two shafts. This side would be the drive side, uh, which would be the chain side, and this side is probably going to be the non-drive side, the crank arm side. This guy here is made in England. It is a TDC is what is what is what is stamped on the inside here. What that means beats me. Um, but what happens is that this goes into here like this, right? And then those slots line up. And then you take said pin and the pin goes in and the flat side of that goes into the little slot. You gotta kind of hold it. No, oh, you know what? Maybe I went the wrong way. Hang on. This way. Maybe not. If this stuff was all cleaned off, maybe this one's... Let me try this one. So that way everybody gets the idea. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now, so you get the idea. So there's your, your pin and your wedge. And your wedge... You, you, Antonio, are you there? All right, so you get the idea of what's going on there, right? You got that that's going right on through, and you got this that this lines up. This goes on, and then this is the carter pin that holds the whole shooting match, and you got to kind of jiggle and push and pull and get it to the right position. Here's where you would tap this home a little bit, and then you would use your nut. To tighten this on to periodically you would need to crank this out sometimes they got so damn tight you couldn't get them the heck out that pin press really works nicely but there it is right so there's how it works you got the idea of what goes on with a cartered crank all right so what's the difference this diameter is pretty critical so what is that diameter you ask good question in millimeters I'll go for you guys like 9.45 millimeters to be exact 9.55 now I got a new one over here what size is that oh this is a 8.9 that's no good what's this one come on baby oh this is a 9.5 what was this one again a 9.5 oh goody it looks like we might have the right one but look at these two look at how that slot comes farther up on this one than it does on that one this is so cheapo Chinese made let's just see if this is gonna work in the hole oh it goes right in but it, you don't want it to go see oh this is gonna work pretty good I think <laughs> even if it is cheap Chinese junk Notice how it fits in there nice and snug and whatnot, and I got plenty of room here to go over that. That's going to be fine. That's going to work dandy. And it's covering up the whole nut. The whole nut is being covered up by the bolt here to here. You with me? Now let's just see if the crank arm inside is going to work. What do I do with my box? This old bike. Norm Abrams and this old bike. Okay, now, so now this here, here we go. The opposite, it's got to be, you know, you don't want them going the same way, but you can't really do it the wrong way. So now that one's going to go into there. 
Now, let's try another one of these beautiful fat carter pins. Now you can see, this is so much easier to show when you have it off the bike. You can see how that one goes this way. This one's going to go the other way so that the nut and everything kind of corresponds accordingly, I hope. Now, why doesn't that one go down farther? Who knows? Now, you want these things to be straight up and down. That's nothing too bad, not too bad. There is some considerable gunk on there. Not bad, though. But why did this one go in not as far as this one? Because I'm not going to be able to catch the thread on that. Might need a little tap, might be some gunk. Who knows? Let's just give it a little crack. I don't want to go crazy. Let's just see if it'll kind of like seat in there a little bit. Not really. Maybe the others, maybe they both got to, oh, that's no, not too bad. Let's see. Again, you're going to have to do some compromisation here on certain things. Oh, it's close enough for government work. I think if we clean off all the gunk and the crap that's inside of there and inside of the hole on the crank arm and on here, I think we're going to be all right. And it's straight up and down, so that means that the shaft, is the, the, the little squares didn't get worn or beat up or anything of the above. Clean this up, do what we got to do. We'll see what the story is with those ball bar the, the cups and whatnot that is in the box, but as far as I'm concerned, we got ourselves a set of, we got ourselves a crank, but now we got to get old Raleigh crank that they put in by accident or by whoever to put in uh, and we probably should use their cups the cup everything should go together I hope that they're not too worn out you have to tune in next week I guess to find out what the story is with that I'm gonna put all of this stuff in one because now we know that these are pretty much junk there we go that can go into there these can go back in the bin. I can't believe I had those in stock. <laughs> man, oh man. Style is the word. And there you have it. You know what I think it is? I think it's time for lunch. What's everybody having for lunch? I got to go to the, hit the head. That's first. That's first and foremost. All right, so we had a little instructional on cartered cranks. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was actually went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to go. Sometimes even a blind nut gets a squirrel. Dee -dee. Let me hang that baby up there. Oh, yeah, that looks good. It's like it, you know what? It could be like a, you ever go into those bike shops that like couches and coffee, coffee bars and everything and they got the $85,000 bicycles that are up on the wall, Chinelli frames on centimeter sizes graduated all the way down, same color, not me. They want you to open a microbrewery here. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I like that. Meet me down for a minute.
Since today is nasty. You can mute me back up again now. All right. Leave it to Beaver. You used to watch that, didn't you, Fred? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> They're panicking that you're going to stop doing the show. They're panicking that I'm going to stop doing the show. Well, what, today or yeah. hey, forever? No. Oh. They have too much fun, some fun, fun amongst themselves. They want to come up with something. They want you to come up with something else. They want me to come up with something else right now? Oh. How's my hair? Yeah. My wife's been really getting on me about my hair lately. Why? Just because. Doreen Green, I see her little mug yeah, over there. She's in here. That a girl. She converted something over. Nice. To a ten, a one by ten. Nice. June Cleaver. Hmm. Did I tell you guys today's show is sponsored by 7-Eleven, the world's best coffee. What's your number? Being wearing a wig. <laughs> What's that? What's your number? <laughs> my haya. You like my haya? All right. Oh, man. Did I tell you guys that you got to vote for Ray Overton for Southampton Town Supervisor? I'm promoting Ray Overton. I support Ray Overton. Rain seems to be subsiding a little bit. They said it was going to stop at around noon. Maybe about the time to call it quits. 25 bucks. That's what we did today. Yeehaw! Made lunch money. Just, just barely pizza money, folks. All right, I got nothing else. We'll get some junk that we're going to have to strip down, but I got other stuff going on too. So we got some things, some paperwork to do, some this to do, to that to do. Good job today, son of a. Wasn't too bad. Quick two hours. You got anything special to add? No. Nothing? No. Be safe, wear a helmet. Be safe, wear a helmet. There you have it, folks. That's a good idea. I like that idea. All right. Good job. Everybody, I want to thank everybody out there in the universe of YouTube land to be tuning in today. Frederick, you got anything going on today? You got anything else, sir? You're, you're about ready. He's about ready. He, it looks like I think I caught him closing his eyes there for a second there. No, I'm <laughs> Sun to come out so I can take my car out tomorrow. Okay, so the That's sun's why gonna I'm come. driving the truck today. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Gotcha. All right, that works. Yeah. There you have it. So, guys, I hope you guys had fun today. I want everybody to love one another. I want everybody to be kind to one another. I would love everybody to love and respect one another. If we could just do those things, things would get a lot better around everywhere. Uh, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in each and every week at The Bike Man for you every Saturday at 10 a.m. New York time. If you're not familiar with who we are, come on over to our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Instagram. We're winding down the season. Things are slowly winding down. And uh, we're, kind of, uh, we're kind of getting into hibernation mode almost a little bit. Uh, so come on in next week, and I'm sure we're going to have something that's going to be good. Remember, guys, if you see something, say something. The war on terror is never going to end, and I guarantee you we can do something about it, and we're winning, and I love it.
So keep up the good work. What else can I say, guys? But thanks so much. We'll see you next week. I want you to never fear. The thumbs up the is the, the bike man for you is here. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Dun, 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 dun.